Life in Pop and Pour cans. Distinctive Miller High Life in Pop and Pour cans. Just Pop and Pour Miller High Life, the champagne of bottled beer. No opener needed. And inside every can, enjoy the hearty yet light goodness of Miller High Life. Hey, boys and girls. What you see in front of you up on my bench is a Zenith. It's a model 6315 from 1939 that I just got done uh, uh, servicing for uh, a local gentleman. And uh, I think this radio is kind of rare and kind of cool. Um, it's not a great, great radio as far as the radio goes, but it does have some interesting, uh, interesting uh, features here. Now, the first thing that you notice right away is it's beautiful. You see this. It's like a like a waterfall type grill here. It's just really, really Art Deco. You have kind of like a machine age kind of tuning knob here. This is the volume knob up front, which is uh, the classic Z knob. You know, with the lightning bolt going through it. This is a broadcast band only radio. Uh, it was made in 1939, and uh, this is there's a couple things that make this radio kind of interesting. One is is that this is I think Zenith's first. Uh, Bakelite radio, or an effort to uh, injection mold Bakelite into uh, a cabinet to put a radio chassis in. Now there was also a 6D311, uh, which was actually an earlier model of this. It looks identical except it's in black Bakelite instead of the brown, or it's near black. It's just a very, very, very dark brown. Even darker than this, it's probably almost looking uh, like black, but it's not. It's an AM only radio. Um, I think it's tuning from about 540 to about, it doesn't cover the entire uh, band by the way, it only goes up to about 1550 KC. And uh, another thing that's kind of unique to this radio is, I'm going to grab it and turn around, is that this was the first radio that incorporated the Zenith wave magnet. Now you've seen the wave magnet in some of the two battery portables, you've seen them on Transoceanics, uh, but this is the very, very first one. It was incorporated on the 6511 uh, or, or 6311 uh, and 6315, like we have here. Okay, uh, here's a picture of the front of the radio. We out of the out of the case, and uh, if you look toward the speaker, and you see this piece of cardboard. Uh, wrapped around and you're wondering, well that may not really look right or that may not be original. Well the truth is it is an original. I made that because there's the original right here and it just fell apart. It's a little press board uh, template. I, I just used it and I made another one for here. But uh, the radio is, uh, itself is kind of neat. It's a six tuber. Let me get a pointer. And uh, I'll give you the tube line up here. Anyway, here's the where I got my pointer. This is 6A8. This is your uh, the oscillator tube. Here is the 6U7G tube here. This is your IF tube. Uh, this is 6Q7, which is uh, in this case the detective uh, detector and amplifier. Next to that is a 25L6 uh, GT. Okay, right here is your output tube. Here is a 100-70 uh, ballast tube right here. And then uh, here is the 25 uh, uh, Z, Z6 uh, rectifier tube right here. So out of all the tubes, initially when I started working and looking at everything here, I usually look at the tubes first. I mean, that's not to say that, you know, maybe you may have a different way of doing it, but that's what I do is I checked all the tubes at first. And uh, the 25L6 did have an awful lot of, uh, after I had radio on for a little bit, it actually showed excessive transconductance. If you go back a few videos that I did, uh, I explained uh, uh, what, what will happen with the excessive transconductance. In this case, it's the same thing. It was in an output tube, and then eventually it'll just stop working. And then uh, over here is a uh, number 44 tube, which I replaced. And... Uh, and that's just for the uh, the dial lighting right there. And here's the bomb in the chassis. The radio had had some work done on it. 
uh, in the past. You can see this little orange drop right here. That was actually in the radio when I got it. Um, the two filters, there's one here and then there's another one, uh, where is it, back here. These two filters were replaced, but uh, one of the filters was already uh, probably about close to 8% leakage, so I decided to redo it. Um, whoever did the work in here prior has had two two 60s in here, which made the radio work, but uh, what uh, the schematic says it, uh, it had from the factory was a, uh, a 40, which is over here, and then a 16 here, so now I've got a 47 and a 22, which is... Uh, a little bit closer to what that what was in here. Um, the resistors pretty much were okay. Um, nothing, you know, nothing uh, unusual here. And uh, all the coils seemed okay, so that was uh, made made life uh, pretty easy. But this was a pretty clean radio to start out with. Okay, so here's a shot of the back of the radio here, and three quarter shot. And if you look over here. I have these three terminals here, one, two, three. And that's for a tuned loop antenna to uh, connect to to the back. So when the when the radio is actually sitting on a table, it almost looks like it's two pieces, but the the back of the radio is actually uh, it's got the antenna on it. Welcome back to tonight's show on Mr. Guy Benson's birthday. We are happy you are all with us, guys, in Chicago, and I'm in Washington, and we were talking about Congresswoman... headlining a film. It's funny, it's sad, it's, uh, it's kind of tragic, but ultimately it's uplifting. Film to her plays the love interest. Um, it, it, it's funny in places. There's the, the back of the radio. And you see here, Berwin doesn't want me to do this. Berwin, Berwin, stop. Something else. Using just these ingredients gives Ryan Gold that fantastic natural taste. Come on, sing along with me, gang. Ryan Gold, Ryan Gold, rick a tick a ting 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 